This video is brought to you by Ultium 365. By the way, I should have made this project during the time of COVID, but well, even now you can use this project or you can modify it into a completely different project. Anyway, as you can see, this project is based on the ESP32 game and ESP8266 Wi-Fi module. MLX9614 non-contact infrared temperature sensor and the HC-SR04 ultrasonic sensor are connected to the ESP8266 Wi-Fi module. Ultrasonic sensor measures the distance of the person standing in front of the MLX9614 temperature sensor. The MLX9614 is used to measure the person's temperature. If the person distance is within the defined range, then the ESP8266 Wi-Fi module sends the person measured temperature and distance to Google Sheets or Google Spreadsheet. And at the same time, it also triggers the ESP32 game to capture the image and send it to the Google Drive. This is a completely contactless IoT-based temperature monitoring system. You may find this project a little difficult, but it's not like that. This project is actually very easy if you follow my instructions. Look, ESP32 cam has its own code and the ESP8266 has its own. The only link between these two is that when a person comes in front of the ultrasonic sensor and the person distance is within the defined range, the ESP8266 Wi-Fi module triggers the I.O. pin of the ESP32 camera module. For the ESP32 cam, it's like if you have connected a button or a digital sensor to its I.O. pin. Anyway, as soon as the I.O. pin on the ESP32 game module is triggered, it captures an image and sends it to the Google Drive. If you want to completely understand and quickly build this project, then for this you will have to watch my previous getting started videos on the ESP32 game module and the Google spreadsheet. I used ESP32 cam to send images to the Google Drive whenever the infrared sensor would detect the presence of a human or any other object. And this project, the infrared sensor has the same job, it triggers the ESP32 cam I open. Now instead of using the IR sensor, I'm using the ESP8266 Wi-Fi module to trigger the I open. So if you watch this video, then your ESP32 cam and Google Drive part will be covered. And to completely understand how to set up your Google spreadsheet for the data logging, then you will have to watch this video. In this project, I have used the DHT11 temperature and humidity sensor. Just forget about the sensor and concentrate on the Google Spreadsheet part only. Once you learn how to set up your Google Spreadsheet account for the data logging, then you can monitor almost anything. In my case, I simply replace the temperature and humidity values with the temperature and distance values. I have added links to the related videos in the description and I have also explained each and every step in the article. So without any further delay, let's get started. Connect the 5-fold and ground pins of the ESP32 camera module to the 5-fold and ground pins of the regulated 5-fold power supply. This 5-fold regulated power supply is based on the 7805 voltage regulator which is okay for the basic testing. But if you are planning on using this project for hours and days, then I would recommend you should build my designed 5-fold and 3 amps power supply. As you might know, ESP32 camera module draws more current and if along with the ESP32 camera module you also power up the ESP8266 and all the other sensors then the 7805 voltage regulator will really get hot and the ESP32 camera module will keep disconnecting. So my recommendation is build yourself this 5 volt and 3 amps power supply which is more than enough for powering all these electronics. Anyway, connect D6 of the ESP8266 to the IO13 on the ESP32K module. The IO13 pin look at the D6 pin is the push button or a digital sensor. I have already explained this in detail. The VCC and ground pins of the MLX9614 non-contact infrared temperature sensor are connected to 3.3 volt and ground pins on the ESP8266 Wi-Fi module. Whereas the SCL and SDA pins of the MLX9614 are connected to the ESP8266 D1 and D2 pins. D1 is the SCL and D2 is the SDA. Connect the VCC and ground pins of the ultrasonic sensor to the 5 volt and ground. Connect the trigger and echo pins to D4 and D5 respectively. So that's all about the connections and if still you feel like you have missed anything then you can follow this circuit diagram. Now let's go ahead and start with the Google Drive setup for the ESP32 cam module. 
while you are signed in with your registered Gmail ID, open the ApeScript page and click on the new project. Enter project name. Copy this Google script code which you can download from our website electronicclinic.com and paste it over here. Save this code. Go to the publish menu and click deploy as web app. Under who has access to the app select anyone even anonymous and click on the deploy button. Click on Review Permissions. Select the email ID. Click on the Advanced. Click on your project. Scroll down and click Allow. You will get this current web app URL. Copy this link and paste it in a new web browser. Copy this part of the URL. Open the ASP32 game programming which you can download from our website electronicclinic.com and replace this part with the new one that we just copied. Our Google Drive and ASP32 game setup is completed and now we can upload the program. Make sure you select the ESP32 ROAR module. Upload speed should be 115200. Flash frequency 40 MHz. Flash mode QIO. Partition scheme huge app. Then select the port and upload the program. You can upload the code to the ESP32 game module using two methods. Get your Ultium 365 workspace activated because Ultium 365 provides a useful solution in cases when you are facing difficulties with your PCB design and unsure of your next step. You can share your project in Ultium Designer or on the web with any user in just a few clicks. You will have full control over who you want to give read-only access for let's say comments and design inspections and who you want to give read-write access to allow full global collaboration by a geographically dispersed team with editing performed through Ultium Designer. Let me show you how to share your project. Simply right-click on the project name and select Share. Write the user's email. Select Read or Write Permissions from the drop-down menu on the right. And click on the Share button. It's just that simple. I've added links to the Ultium Designer, Ultium 365 and Octopod the world's fastest component search engine. Now let's get back to our project. The first method is using the Arduino Uno or Arduino Nano. Connect your ESP32 game module to the Arduino Uno or Arduino Nano by following this circuit diagram. The second method is using this development board. All you need is to simply plug in the ESP32 game, connect it to your laptop and upload the program. If you want to save time and to avoid any risk of damaging your ESP32 game module then I highly recommend get yourself this development board. Anyway after uploading the program now we can start with a Google spreadsheet. While you are logged in into your registered Gmail ID click on sheets. Click on start a new spreadsheet. Enter your project name. Set the column names. Go to the extensions menu and click on the Ape script. Enter the project name. Remember it has nothing to do with the ESP32 game module. This time we are doing it for the ESP8266 Wi-Fi module. Copy and paste this script. You can download it from my article available on electronicclinic.com. Go to your Google spreadsheet 
and copy this part of the URL and paste it in the script. All the other steps are exactly the same as we followed for the ESP32 camera module. Copy this URL, open a new tab and paste this link. Copy this part of the URL. Open the ESP8266 programming and replace this part of the case ID. And don't forget to change your SSID and password. Finally, you can upload the program. As you can see, the program has been uploaded. So that's all for now. Support me on Patreon for more videos. I hope you liked today's episode. Like and share this video with your friends. See you in next episode. And thanks for watching.